In the not too distant future, Atlantis seeking archaeologists may have to trade in their sun hats and scuba gear for snow goggles and parkas. If a rapidly growing body of opinion proves correct, instead of the bottom of the ocean, the next great, great arena of exploration for the fabled lost continent could be the frozen wastelands at the bottom of the world. And before scoffing too vigorously, proponents of probable locations for Atlantis, such as the North Atlantic Ocean and the Aegean Sea, as well as other candidates, would be well advised to give the new arguments for Atlantis and Antarctica a fair hearing. And that's uh, from Atlantis in Antarctica. In uh, Forbidden History, Prehistoric Technologies, Extraterrestrial Intervention, and the Suppressed Origins of Civilization, edited by J. Douglas Kenyon, and that's a Bear and Company book. Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Stench of Truth. Um, I have noticed that uh, through some recent information that has come to light that AIG, Goldman Sachs, and uh, the New York uh, Federal Reserve Bank, as well as Timothy Geithner, are still in the news, and rightfully so, because, my friends, there is a great seething pit of corruption and malfeasance that is buried in that entire mess and fiasco. And uh, what it seems to be at this particular point in time is that Goldman Sachs deliberately bundled together securities that they knew were worthless junk and then insured them to the hilt with AIG. And then when AIG was called to the carpet and was looming in bankruptcy and forced to get um, I think it was $180 billion to prevent it from going under, uh, then, of course, we know that they paid off contracts to Goldman Sachs, and particularly Societe Generale, uh, a foreign bank. Pay, uh, AIG paid them 100 cents on the dollar for all of these insured CDOs. And what it's looking like now is the New York Fed is continuing to stonewall any information coming out about interactions between the Federal Reserve and AIG and the AIG payouts to Goldman Sachs and others, most notably foreign banks at 100 cents on the dollar. Now there was an article I read online um, I think it was at Bloomberg. Um, I'm not sure right off the top of my head, but I think it was at Bloomberg, which uh, actually used the words that uh, I've been saying for a long time now, and that is that Timothy Geithner must go. And while there is any scrap and shred of this in the news, talk of AIG, Goldman Sachs, or other banks that have been bailed out by the Federal Reserve or the United States government, we must push with all of our might, all of our combined strength. And even if we're like a gnat on the back of a giant lumbering beast, we must pester and continue to push for Geithner's removal. Now it's true. It's true that the vast majority of people in this country who are taking action are frustrated at every turn because of senators and congressmen that refuse to listen to them, that will not even return their letters or phone calls or answer the questions that are pointedly given to them. But that's still a very small amount of people in this country. And I would say and I absolutely guarantee that if enough people get involved, they have no choice but to listen. What they'll do once they've heard what the great mass of people have to say is a matter that I cannot speculate on, because certainly there are many options open to them. 
one, the most direct, which is what we want, is that they actually listen to us, do what we demand, and make the changes that are necessary to bring this country back, back from the brink of financial calamity. So that's why whenever any tidbit or scrap of news comes out on any issue, it is vitally important for you to jump on it, to continue to ram it down those people's throats who supposedly represent you, your elected officials. And damn it, I'll say it again, that if you are sitting there saying, my getting involved is not going to do any good because they never listen to me, then you're part of the problem and not part of the solution. Because it's an attitude like that that starts as a chain reaction which keeps vast numbers of people from doing anything to try to make things better. And it's just like a snowstorm that descends on you and dumps a whole bunch of snow all over you. You can't stop the snow but you can fight against it. You can take steps to defeat it, to overcome it. And that's what we have to do. That's what's vital. Political activism now is our only option. It is the most important option. And it is the most vital thing that we do. And that's why we have to keep an eye on all of these things. And any time, any media, talks about any of these subjects where we can attack, we have to attack. We have to. If we sit idly by, then we might as well give up and let them do whatever they want. And, and I might add, you have no right to complain about it. So while the AIG, Goldman Sachs, Timothy Geithner, New York Fed story is circulating, it's time to get on with that. Push for Geithner to be removed. Push for an inquiry into AIG and their payoff of Society General and Goldman Sachs. And remember, my friends, Goldman Sachs is merely the front line for Wall Street. There are many other banks involved here. And I only use them as the example because they're the ones that take most of the heat up front, while the other players can continue to do their machinations behind the scenes. But make no mistake, an attack against Goldman Sachs is, attack, is an attack against Wall Street. And if we have to use them as a point of attack, then that's what we'll do. So I urge you right now, to take steps, to take action, to get Geithner out of office because of the actions of the New York Fed, because of what happened with AIG and Goldman Sachs, and to point out the need for real financial reform in this country, to shut down the type of activity that Goldman Sachs was engaged in, that is deliberately bundling, bundling together worthless securities then insuring them, and then when they turned out to be worthless, getting a hundred cents on the dollar for those worthless securities that they knew to be worthless. And this is the same bank that sold securities to their own clients and then betted that those securities would fail and made money off of it. This is how predatory they are. And they're just an example for all the banks and all of the firms that we can all group together as Wall Street. Take action now or forever hold your peace because you have absolutely no right to complain if you're doing nothing to try to change it. Thank you.